Let me set the scene. So imagine you wake up and the first thing that you do is that you immediately decide to check your phone. You try to look for messages from the night before. You see none, so you decide to check and see if there are any recent social media posts that you can interact with. Then you decide to go onto YouTube and look at some videos for the next hour while you contemplate your life. And then you decide that you finally should actually get ready for your day. As you're getting ready, you decide to just look at your phone and see if there are any responses to any messages that you've sent. After you finish getting ready, you check your phone one more time and see that you were left on read, delivered, and any other thing like that. So then you have to come to terms that you are alone, and that's okay. Bronx is ruining the bit. I don't know if you could tell this is actually, this phone is real, but I haven't used it since about ninth grade, um, and it's broken, um, actually, so that's cool. Hi, hello, how are we doing today? My name is Zaria Smith and I typically make commentary videos just like this one and today's candle is whipped coffee. And Bronx, do you have anything you wanna say? That's pretty good ASMR. As many of you guys may know, I am a senior in college right now. I have one more semester left after this one and I recently, I have to do like media literacy thing and I had to write a blog post. If I'm not working or doing this, I'm on my phone. And despite being on my phone, I don't know if you can tell this, but I am lonely. <laughs> and I found out that I'm actually not the only person that's lonely and it's actually an epidemic that's happening amongst my generation and millennials. I decided to make my post for my class about loneliness online. <laughs> okay, Bronx. And it's interesting and I really wanted to talk about it on here because I think that loneliness is something that is so prevalent and YouTube is actually kind of part of why I feel like a lot of people, despite having friends or not having friends or whatever, being surrounded by people are constantly in a state of loneliness and try to seek out things such as a lot of things I'll get into later just to combat that loneliness. So I guess, unless Bronx has anything else he wants to say, we can get into today's video. So update, Bronx is now left and now I have Sedona here. You can probably hear her bell. We have a bell on her because she likes to run away and we can never find her. So the bell is so we can hear her. So I'm sorry if that bothers you, but Gen Z is considered the loneliest generation. Before it was the millennials, but then Gen Z decided to just make it extra lonely. And some people say that um, Generation Alpha is going to be the next only generation, but you know, we'll never know until they get old enough for us to do research on it. And I don't think this is particularly a shock to anybody, but social media is actually really bad for your mental health, unless you use it properly and minimize your contact with it on a day-to-day -day basis. You probably at, have at some point been consumed by um, how social media can become very toxic, especially if you have like a Twitter. Um, Twitter is a cesspool of chaos and I love it. Um, but social media can be very bad um, for your mental health. And it's interesting because social media also is one of the only things that we have to connect to millions of people on a day-to-day -day basis. Because in your day-to-day -day life, you probably don't come across a lot of people that you talk to. You could be an introvert, whatever it may be, but social media, is the one thing that you can do where you can talk to people that are sometimes thousands of miles away and you can form a connection or that connection could be very empty. I feel like that when it comes to loneliness online, that the biggest issue is kind of having too many options. And that's why I feel like our generation, well, my generation, I don't know how old you are, um, but that's why I feel like that um, my generation has such an issue when it comes to loneliness because we have so many options to talk to an endless amount of people at any given time. And yet a lot of us have a 
some sort of insecurity because we're like, we don't want to bother a person if they're, you know, going about their day. There's time zones. There's so many things that go into that when you're talking to people online. You don't want to seem like a person who's desperate and needs to be talked to all the time because that is some the case for a lot of people. Um, and I think that we have just so much, so many people, so many platforms, just so much stuff clogging our brains 24 7 that we don't seek out sometimes these relationships online because we feel like we're asking too much and it causes us to be just really really lonely we have a lot of dating apps for example as well for my generation that is something that's very new because obviously plenty of fish existed for the millennials but when it comes to like tinder bumble hinge you can swipe left and swipe right on somebody, make a quick judgment about them in two seconds. It is so hard to find somebody to date or somebody to be friends with just because there's too many options. There's so much going on and it probably would be more convenient or better for you to just simply go to, I was gonna say go to the store, go to a group like I used to do community theater. That was a great place to find friends. Um, you can go to comic cons. You can go to group. You can just find things to do in the wild um, that kind of can help you in that regard. Um, so I think that another issue when it comes to us being the loneliest generation is that we have friends. You know, like for instance, for me, I have about two and a half friends. Um, I guess the term friend is very loose. I have a lot of acquaintances, I suppose, but I have like two friends who are like my best friends um, and they both don't live near me. Um, one lives in Tallahassee, the other one lives in Orlando. And it's hard to find friends in the place where I live because it's really hard, especially with the whole um, COVID situation going on um, constantly. It's very hard to go out and try to find friends. Mumble BFF is literally one of the worst creations I've ever came across. And it's just funny, but it's also really interesting to see because I have a mom. I don't know if you know this. My mom has so many friends. She has so many friends. So she's in Generation X. And I look at that and I'm like, wow, it must be nice to constantly be doing things. And granted, I think if I were to be constantly doing things, I would be exhausted and tired and I would not want to do anything but I guess whatever the point is, is my mom has more friends than me if you want to be my friend leave a comment down below because I am lonely for this section of the video I wanted to talk about my experience with loneliness and I felt like the best way to talk about this would be in my bed because I actually sleep with these I have more stuffed animals somewhere in my room um they fall on the floor a lot they're probably under my bed right now but at any given moment I will be sleeping with about four to five stuffed animals <laughs> um your girl is lonely. Um, so I was born August 20th, 2001. Um, and it's interesting birthday because I was born before 9-11 and I graduated high school right before um, COVID shut everything down. Um, and now I'm graduating college into a recession. Growing up, I had a lot of difficulty with maintaining relationships because I had a constant issue. And it could have just been because I was a theater kid. So I was constantly dealing with stuff with a bunch of people and I constantly had this feeling of not belonging you know and I didn't know that I was the old I felt like I was the only person in the world experiencing that but I actually wasn't what sucks the most is that I'm 20 I'm about to turn 21 like I said and um it's hard because it's like you grow up and you get told that the best years of your life are going to be in college and yet I'm graduating college in December and I have developed no friendships from college um I had roommates um we don't particularly talk any more um the pandemic kind of in a way cut through my developmental years of being in college i got my associates in 2020 i'm now getting my bachelor's in 2022 um i these last the entirety of my getting my bachelor's i've done my courses online because during a pandemic my thought process was oh well we're in a pandemic anyway so i might as well take my classes online and now i'm about to graduate I never did the college experiences. I've never, I mean, and it could just be like, I'm literally only turning 21 next month. It's not like my life is going downhill, but it's like, I didn't get that developmental part that I feel like a lot of college students get where they get to be around a lot of people their age and they go out constantly and they do fun things. They develop friendships, relationships, and just so many things. And I never got that 
And I could still get that. (laughs) I could try, but I've learned being an adult who's like a working adult, it is so hard to make friends. I go to most places by myself. I go to the movies by myself. I went to see Curtis Connor by myself, which was really awkward. I do pretty much everything by myself. And it has helped me have the ability to be able to do things on my own because I never thought that I could do those things on my own. Kind of like, um, I go to restaurants by myself and if I if he told 16 year old me that I'd be going to restaurants by myself I would have freaked out because I was so scared of doing that and now I can do that I could go on trips by myself I just am so comfortable with myself but I am so comfortable with myself that I'm kind of over being with myself I've always had a connection to being online and being online has made me feel like some sort of belonging and it's honestly embarrassing but seeing people like Shane Dawson or um, Philip DeFranco or Smosh or any of those other just like OG YouTubers that made me feel like I was connected to something especially in like 2011 and 2012 when I was a big fan of Dan and Phil I felt like I had friends. I felt like every single day I could go home and I could just watch Dan and Phil videos. That would make me feel like I had two best friends that were engaging with me when they weren't. (laughs) They don't know who I am. But the point is, is that the relationships that I've had online that I've seen are, have helped me with my loneliness, but also I feel like that me reverting into myself and me deciding to be online as opposed to trying a little bit harder to make friends, I'm now in this weird limbo phase where it's like, I'm online so much and I never go outside now. And I'm a person who's extremely online and it's really sad because I just spend all, granted I do do online school. So again, I have a high screen time all the time, but it's like the majority of my time is spent in front of my laptop, in front of this laptop. Like it's, all I do and I watch Crunchyroll on my TV. It's just interesting that this is a whole epidemic online specifically and not even just a COVID thing but just a Gen Z thing and I think it's really interesting and the just there's so much content with being alone and it's just comforting but it's also like it traps you into that constant cycle of being alone. So next I kind of wanted to talk about the being alone type of content that you see online. This, I feel like recently I've been seeing all over my um, homepage or also just on TikTok as well, um, where people have been like living alone, doing this activity alone, going to Paris alone, doing blah, blah, blah alone. My cat is trying to eat the wallpaper and I, okay, you're gonna be right here. You have no choice because I don't want you to eat the wall. What the heck? Okay, so, I feel like there's so much of this content and granted, I love it. I love it. I'm planning on moving out at some point and I will be alone when I move out aside from my dog who isn't here with us. She's okay. She's just asleep somewhere in the house. I don't know where she is, Um, but it's interesting because we have people that are of that age, 19, 20, 21, 22, that make these vlogs and this content about being by themselves and being comfortable by themselves. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think if anything, that's really helpful. And it's good to get tips from people, especially when you yourself are alone. And then you click on and you see content about other people that are also alone and doing that. And I think that also when it comes to being alone, vloggers are so, so, so popular right now. Um, Specifically Emma Chamberlain, but so many people do daily vlogs and they get millions of views because some people, they're lonely. All that they want to do is just watch a random person that they have a parasocial relationship do daily tasks. Like imagine if I told somebody in 2002 that in 20 years there would be millions of young teens that were lonely and were watching other young teens record themselves doing daily tasks and that was entertainment. And the people filming that get paid for it. And no, they're not celebrities. That is an insane concept. Like, it's so cool to me because I love watching that content. It's not something that I watch all the time. I typically just watch really long video essays that are like three hours long and I just sink into my bed. Um, But I think in general that this content is helpful and it just proves to show that people are really lonely online not just creators, but also the people that are watching them. And there's this weird kind of relationship between people making content and people watching their content. 
and it's just an interesting kind of can mix of things i guess this also in the same breath can be applied to things such as family channels because imagine you yourself don't have a family you're alone perhaps you don't have a significant other and you can kind of live out your life and live out your dreams throughout this person you can see them do the things that they're doing have a grand old time and it can give a sort of fulfillment to you as a person and you might not even realize it and i think it's something that's really magical about online but can also be very bad because it's like it kind of feeds into the loneliness because it's like in a way if you're a 13 year old girl and you have no friends and you sit at home and watch i don't know my fam is that her name every single day you're probably not going to have the aspirations to go out and make more friends because you're like i already have a friend and she's online in general for the analogy that person is a millionaire that person is not going to be able to talk to you all the time you know what are you gonna do when you run out of videos to watch you know one of my comfort creators was best dressed i love her content she'd stop posting <laughs> she'd stop posting and it kind of took me aback for a second and um now i'm no longer attached i guess but the thing is is that i learned a lesson is that you can form a relationship with a person that you don't even know and they don't know you you just know what they put online so also talking about you know content where you're listening to it alone there was this huge rise of audiobooks and podcasts in about 2013 and i love a good audiobook i love a good podcast the first podcast that i listened to was actually the tiny meat gang podcast um and i listened to i actually this is maybe gonna sound probably old or weird but i have been listening to the tiny meat gang podcast since they first since the first episode since they announced they were going to be doing a podcast together i listened to insanely chill i guess i listened to insanely chill before tiny meat gang but the point is is my first experience with the podcast was a youtuber podcast and i love youtuber podcasts i'm probably gonna make a podcast at some point if i finally have the time for it because i'm running around like a chicken with its head cut off every day because i'm school work this constantly doing things but podcasts are very intimate right because you can listen to joe rogan interview some random person being racist but for me i listen to podcasts such as the how to start over podcast which is really sad um i also listen to anything goes i listen to very very really good i listen to obviously the tiny meat gang podcast i listen to a lot of podcasts that are kind of like a person just having a long stream of thoughts kind of like what i'm doing right now a long stream of thoughts and i listen to that it's almost as though i'm driving home when i'm having a conversation in fact when i was living in orlando and i was driving back and forth between jacksonville and orlando because my parents are from jacksonville i would listen to podcasts because i was it was hard for me to drive by myself that far so i would listen to podcasts to help me stay awake and help me feel like i was having a conversation with someone which sounds so lonely to say out loud but i guess that's also the point of today's video so you know it is what it is but i think that in general it's just like we're constantly being fed content about being alone and content helping you combat that loneliness but you don't see a lot of content of people telling you to go outside and i'm not saying that people in my generation don't have lives because oh my gosh there are people that are my age that are living it up <laughs> every day have a bunch of friends so this isn't just like a every single person in gen z is alone but i do know that at least 60 something percent of gen z feels alone because that was actually in a survey that i read when i was doing my thing for my class i feel like there's almost this illusion of community because yes you can have a discord server you can chat with your friends on twitter but at the end of the day you lay in your bed and you kind of just sit there and you try to kind of get some sort of remnants of a friendship online and that friendship online can last i have i had friends online that lasted a very long time back in the tumblr days um and that was great for me but the point is is that we have these connections online that are sometimes superficial or artificial or whatever the correct word it is and it's causing people even though they do have that community they have that group 
they also feel extremely alone and like i can't express to you i'm an introvert fun fact um but i can't express to you how it feels to be in a room full of people and feel like you are completely alone that's a horrible feeling and that's kind of like how i feel on a day-to-day basis and that's how i feel whenever i go online it's just a constant cycle of loneliness and it's kind of hard because you try to wonder like where do we go from here now this isn't just a big metaphor of me saying to go outside and touch some grass because i do know that the sun gives us energy you know and the sun we're not plants obviously but the sun does help us you know have energy the sun is great the sun also makes us tired though so don't go outside too much but the point of this video is that we're alone all the time (laughs) um you know and even the most people the people who seem like they're not alone probably are alone you know they might be surrounded by thousands of people and yet they can still feel lonely within themselves and I think that being online being online so much has in a way hindered our ability to be able to just go outside and go to the beach go take a picnic or something I don't know what people do I don't go outside obviously um but I think that just having a time to just sit down with yourself maybe go on a drive go to target do something by yourself or find someone to go with it try to make friends in the wild i know it's hard but maybe when you go to that overpriced little coffee shop that charges six dollars for your oat milk lavender latte try seeing if there's someone there that gets the same thing you know try making friends with your local baristas or whatever there's a dragonfly that's currently threatening me but I think that being outside and talking to people and trying to have connections in the outside world, even if you fail with those connections nine times out of 10, if you can get one friend out of just trying to be more outward and trying to make friends, then it would have been worth it. You know, I think that being online, having friends online can be good. It can be great for your development and it can be great for you to not feel lonely. It is nice to be able to want to go see a movie with someone and being able to watch a movie with that person and being able to go and get dinner with someone. Even if you're not dating, you're just friends, you know, you can go to the museum with somebody. You can go on a picnic, go to the beach. It's good to just have a person that you can physically be near that can be your friend. And it could just be a light friendship. It doesn't have to be the person that you're having such a deep connection with and your soulmates, you know. It's just someone you can have fun with. And that is so crucial to your development as a human being. And also the sun, because the sun is cool, unless you're me, in which the sun is trying to murder me at all times of the day. Um, But... You know, all of this to just say that go outside and touch some grass, obviously. You think I did all this for nothing? Touch some grass. Go breathe in the air. Drink some water. Just do something. Go outside. Imagine this is like the Nickelodeon Worldwide Day of Play where you would just switch over and go to a different channel. Imagine that's this. After you watch this, maybe go outside and like, I don't know, go on a walk or something. That's what I do sometimes. I go on my hot girl walks and I enjoy them. They're nice. Just, it's good for the soul. So, yeah, I guess that's it. I guess I'll wrap up this video because I can feel my face starting to burn, which is usually not a good sign. That was a lot. Filming in multiple locations for a video and doing all this stuff. I just had a creative bug, I guess. I don't know. But um, if you guys like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up because it helps little, little channels like mine. Make sure to subscribe to me if you would like to. You obviously don't have to, but I would like it if you did because that made me feel like I wasn't so alone. Um, I don't know if you notice this, but I will make random community posts and I'll just be like, hey, talk to me (laughs) because I'm curious. And I know that's probably like bad, but like I just like talking to you guys. So make sure to subscribe to me. I make a lot of community posts. You can follow me on Instagram or on Twitter. I respond to DMs like almost with record speed because of the whole concept of this video. But I guess that's it. So um, make sure to stay happy, stay healthy, and stay safe. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.